Okay, so today I got a chance to play a course called Verdict Ridge Golf Course and Country Club. In It's actually in Denver, North Carolina, but it's uh, maybe half an hour north of Charlotte. North of the Charlotte Beltway, or Loop, or whatever you call it. And this is a Slope 143 course, if you go by the USGA database. On the course, on the scorecard that the course is used, it says it's a 149, slope 149 course with a 6,900 yard loop, 18 holes. And I played it midday during the week and it cost, I don't even know, honestly, I think it was like 50 bucks with a cart. They have a nice website where you can buy your tea time and so forth and, and pretty much Every course I've played other than one in North Carolina, you have to go online and book a tee time. I mean, it's just almost impossible to get on the course otherwise. Uh, there's so many people playing this time of year here that it's really hard and they don't you know, really do walk-ons or anything like that. So it's better just go on, on their website and get a tee time. So the problem with this course is you can't book a tee time more than a week in advance unless you're a member and it is a members you know course it does have memberships but it's not like a exclusive or private course so the thing is it's actually a pretty nice course nice clubhouse uh they have a, a gym actually in the clubhouse with spinning machines sta uh, stationary bikes and so forth in the base first floor or actually the ground floor i guess the the top floor is opens to the top and then you go down and there's the course level where the Putting green is behind the clubhouse, and there's a, a lower level there, and that's where the pro shop is. And it's a nice place. It's not really big. It's not ostentatious. It's not one of these, you know, colonial style clubhouses like uh, Virginia National or something. But it was a nice modern facility, and they had these uh, nice modern carts. They were gas carts, but still, you know, pretty quiet carts. And this course is tough but it's not really tough i think it i think it's a challenge for an a you know an intermediate golfer but it's not that much of a challenge it's kind of sneaky in some ways in that it does have some good challenging tee shots and good challenging approaches but it also there's still a lot of room around the greens on most of the greens and while there's some elevated greens and there's some greens that have st slopes that drop off you know hard on the side and so forth it's really not that hard a course. I don't think it's that difficult. I think it's, it sort of varies between tough and not really tough. There's some tough shots, some, especially, you know, if you're playing for the back tees, it's as tough as it's gonna get as far as the length goes. And there's some tough tee shots, there's some easy tee shots, but basically I think it's like most golf courses, you can make it hard or you can make it easy by hitting good shots or, dumb shots or bad shots or anything like that. You can make it hard. You can always make it hard. So it's like a lot of golf in a sense that it's hard if you don't hit good shots, but if you do hit good shots, it's you know decent. And the only really tough thing about this course is that there is a fair amount of slope from side to side on some of the fairways. There's a lot of oscillations and so forth on the fairways. You, there's almost always some water that you have to cross to get to the green and it can be very straightforward on some holes and it can be very vertical and challenging but it never really is so tight that it's a problem that's one of the things the misunderstandings that i got from looking at the flyovers they have the website has a bunch of flyovers a flyover for every hole on the course and they're really misleading. The course is not as tight as the flyovers make it look. And in fact, I don't think there were any holes that were really too tough to play. I think they were all decent. I've seen much tougher holes in some courses. I have seen holes that were not so much easier than some of the holes. It, it really did have a good spread. Some of the holes were tough and some of them weren't. The main thing is it's easy to take yourself out of the hole. If you really panic too much, you can take yourself right out of a hole. 
You just have to stick in there and play your shots and execute. And if you do that, it's, it's a decent course with some holes where like the first hole has a, a rise in front of the green so that you have to pass. You can't just, you know, bounce a ball up onto the green. It's an elevated green. It's a very small green with a crown on it. And there's a small hill right in front of the green. So it's not possible to run a shot right up on the green unless you get a lot of speed on it. And then it's very likely that it's going to fly over the green after it goes over the first hump. So the thing that I thought was rather challenging about this course was the putting. If anything, it was the putting because at least for the day that I played, the first, I would say, nine holes, the greens were very hard and very fast. They're cut short enough. It's like Poana green grass, not uh, your standard Bermuda grass or um, Kentucky bluegrass or the normal bladed grass that you see, uh, which is sort of like a cotton ball maybe on a golf course or a smooth uh, biller table type surface. It's, it's much more of a Poana type surface, but not you know, bumpy. It, it was actually pretty interesting and in that the greens were not fast, but they had a lot of slope in it. And quite often the, the holes were cut on top of a humpback or something. And they were challenging at one, you know, to the right, they would break to the right and to the left of the hole, they'd break to the left and maybe high and back, they'd break far away from the hole. So if you weren't careful where you put your putts, you could very easily end up putting away from the hole and it it was a decent challenge um, there's no question the course is not an easy course it's not a pushover course but at the same time there are a fair number of holes that are not hard there's some easy par threes on the course there's some easy par fours on the course and there are some challenging par fours some moderately challenging par threes from the back tees some moderately challenging par fives, certainly from the back tees. And I think there's one par five that's 597 yards. And again, the key to any of these long holes is hitting decent tee shots and second shots and not hitting into trouble. There, even a 600 yard par five is playable with three 200 yard shots. So if you don't hit into trouble, you probably won't have a hard time. There's some holes where you want to hit up on the slope on the left and let the ball trickle down off the slope, you know, left slope or right slope where there may be a 45 degree slope or, or maybe, you know, even higher 60 degree slope. Let the ball trickle down off the side of the slope and come down onto the green. Some holes where you have to be careful not to play right because there's not much room. If the ball does go right, you know, there's just not a lot of room there either. There's a waste or a pond or something. There's no question about that, but there's nothing on this course which is going to be so tough that it's almost impossible to play unless you're an expert golfer. I think that there are no holes on this course that are harder than holes that I've played at other courses. So the thing about it is it was kind of a letdown in a sense, and I did find myself kind of daydreaming away from the course a little bit which does catch you if you're not, uh, you know, fully, I would say fully focused, but I'll definitely say not focused enough. You can run into some trouble, but at the same time, I think it's a, a pretty straightforward drive, you know, approach putt kind of hole. Although I think it's probably above average in terms of putting difficulty. There's, there's a little doubt about that, that most of the holes are challenging to put on. But again, not, completely new in that sense. I've played quite a few courses that are challenging to put on. This course is definitely a challenging course to put on, but at the same time, if you, if you are a decent putter, you can manage that, you know, fairly, you, you, know, you can play lags and, and leave putts a little closer to the hole. So you can make that second putt, but you have to be careful. It's not one of these courses. You can just blast balls towards the pin, get the distance right. And it'll stop somewhere within two or three feet of the pin. You, almost always have to play reads, play slopes, and manage your speeds and, and breaks and so forth. And it's a good course in that regard. So I thought its strengths were really the putting as a challenge and the balanced strength of the tee shots and approach shots, not too tough, not too easy, definitely a challenge. And 
I think as a golf course, it's a good golf course. I certainly would have to give it a B or B plus as a golf course. I wouldn't say it's a great golf course because again, it's in the middle of a housing development. And while these are again, nice houses, again, that only gives you so much of a course to play. You really don't have any real visuals on a, house, a course that's stuck in the middle of a housing development. And this course had unfortunately that problem. And unfortunately, again, it's not just that the houses are there. There were I mean, sorry, quite a few holes with significant number of houses. There were quite a few holes, maybe five or six holes where there was LB right on the edge of the fairway or right on the edge of the rough because there were houses right, you know, right off there. And, and while at the, there were quite a few shots where you couldn't quite see the houses from the tee box, you definitely could see them from the fairway. I mean, there's, there's no hiding the fact that there were a significant number of houses on this course. It just, you know, I even saw nets on some of the houses, put it that way. There was at least a couple of houses I saw that were in range off the tee and it had nets, you know, on the house. The thing about it is, is there also were a number of greens where there were houses, you know, chuck, 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 chuck. A couple of holes I felt like was an amphitheater of houses. There were always houses overlooking the fairways and so forth, right, if not right on the fairway or just off the fairway, but, and there were some holes where there were houses just off the fairway, but a lot of times there were houses that were 10 to 20 or 30 yards back from the fairway, or maybe even 50 yards back from the fairway, but they're, they're up, they're looming over the, you know, over the fairway. And certainly there were houses looming over some of the greens. So it wasn't anything really different than many courses where there was a significant housing presence, a lot of people mowing their lawns, especially with these upscale, upscale houses, you tend to find that there's someone doing yard work, you know, on the first five holes or something like that. You know, there's either, and the worst thing was at the clubhouse. I think there was a guy power washing something. I guess they were power washing the carts at the clubhouse. So you're at the first tee, it's right by the cl clubhouse. And, and there's some guy power washing carts, you know, maybe 75 yards away. You go to the second tee box and there's somebody mowing a yard. You go to the third tee box. There's somebody mowing a yard. You go to your approach shot. There's someone mowing a yard. There's fourth shot. Someone mowing a yard. We got it got to we got to the fifth hole, I think, before we finally stopped hearing someone in a in a house adjacent to the fairway who was mowing their yard, and it's just, you know, amazing. Then there's a, some some houses where they're doing construction in the area. They're dropping uh, gravel and stuff, and or someone's out in the back cutting their their you know, flowers in the back, or there's a dog, you know, that barks or whatever. But for the most part, it was fairly quiet. It's just that it was really kind of knocking on the door to being obnoxious. For the most part, it wasn't really bad, but it still was definitely a, a factor. I cannot give this course a great grade for one reason, because it does have so many houses around the course. And while, again, they're not a huge factor in play, they do loom over the course quite frequently. The OB is tight on the course in certain places for that reason. When it, it's just, you know, almost obnoxious how tight the OB is in some places. And that's one thing. And the third thing is you really can't see anything. There's really nothing of a visual, you know, that's the third thing. And the fourth thing really is... It isn't all that great of a course. It, it is not all that great of a course. It's a decent course. It's a good course. It's one of the better neighborhood courses that I've played. It is in the top 15% of neighborhood courses that I've ever played. You cannot complain that it's flat. You can't complain that it's too easy. You can't complain that it's too narrow. You can't complain that it's too open either. It's, it's, it's a nice middle of the road course, but it, it doesn't bring any magic in the sense that you play this course and go, wow, that was a really great outing. It was good. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. And I can only give it a B 
for that reason, it, it, it does leave you wanting a little bit more as a golf course, but at the same time, it's a good golf course. That's Verdict Ridge Golf Course in, the town is called Denver, North Carolina, but it's really just north of Charlotte on, just off I-77 West, um, maybe 10 or 15 miles um, through Route 150, which goes across, I guess it's Lake Nirmal. It's it, you're west of that and west of I-77 and just north of Charlotte. And not a bad course, not a, not a bad course, not a bad price, not a great course, a good course, a good, I think it, it's a course that you could say, you put it on your list of courses to play in the area, but I wouldn't lose a lot of sleep over not playing this course. It's definitely worth playing, but it's not like I'd travel 500 miles to play this course. If you're in the area, I would definitely check it out. That's Verdict Ridge Golf Course in Denver slash Charlotte, North Carolina.